So, you want to start a FNAF VHS series. Neat. Cool. You got some ideas for about three to five tapes. You've made your YouTube channel along with your banner and icon. Maybe you've got an upload schedule. Nice. But you don't have the resources to make any tapes. That's alright. You want to know why? Because I'm here to help. I'm Goldie. And this is how I make my FNAF VHS tapes, version 2.0. So first off, we have to start with what you'll be using to edit your tapes. Let's be honest, Windows Movie Maker or Windows Video Editor ain't gonna cut it. You need software that can truly convey the VHS aesthetic. You can search up video editors and you'll get a wide variety, but in case you're wondering, here are a few that I suggest. Wondershare Filmora, Sony Vegas, Adobe Premiere Pro, and Movavi Video Suite. Movavi... Vi, Vav, never mind, let's just move on. But you do have a lot of other options. For those of you who are mobile users, you have the option of stuff like Filmora Go, CapCut, and Kinemaster all being free to use. For this video, I'll be using Filmora X. Okay, so let's say you've decided on a video editor. Now you need your tape visualized. You have the option of Photoshop or Adobe Premiere Pro, like I said earlier, but it's $21 per month for each program, or $252 a year for one program alone. You also have the option of using Canva.com, which has a lot of features and is what I suggest using since it's completely free and it's quite easy to use. I also recommend two other programs, RemoveBG.com and Pinatools. The former, well it's a background remover, and the latter is a color inverter. If you're using Filmora, you have a wide variety of tools such as cropping and face blockage along with many filters to make your photos stand out. For photos in general, looking online is fine. If you look long enough, you'll be able to find what you're looking for. However, if you are to use images and whatnot that you find off the web, remember to credit the original. If you're not allowed to use the footage or photos, then don't. Also, if you're just gonna rip someone else's work and make it seem like your own even if you credit them, I don't think that's gonna do well. And it won't. Just because you slap a VHS filter on a video does not mean that it is your video now. And crediting them is not much better. You need to add, add substance to your video. Remember that. Now I'm not going to go into this area too much since there are loads of tutorials that you could use to help you create animation, 3D animation. But if you're wondering what to use, I'd recommend using just SFM, Source Filmmaker, unless you're a GigaChad in which you use Blender. Now you need some audio to go along with your tape and in some cases, music. The first idea would probably be to go to the YouTube search bar and just search non-copyright music. And whilst that does work, be careful about what you're using. You could also do the same for VHS sounds and overlays, but remember, credit the original. The second option could be to go to the YouTube audio library where you can find a lot of attribution-free music, however, no VHS sounds, and sometimes the music doesn't really go well with the tapes. Finally, you can search for non-copyrighted music in the Google search bar and use services like, but not limited to, Artlist.io, Adobe Stock, and Epidemic Sound. Next up, we're going to touch on text-to-speech or TTS voices, something that I forgot in the first vid. Me small brain. Whether you are using a PC or a phone, you must record your screen to capture the TTS audio, which will save as an MP4 file. If you're using external software on a PC, 
then the recorded file will save in a special recorded folder from the software that you have used. If you're using the Xbox Game Bar on the PC, it will save in captures, where both screenshots and recorded videos will save on your PC in general. For iPhone users, recording from your screen will be saved in your photos, where you can then access the videos and transfer them into whatever video software you're using. For audio editing, I'd recommend using Soundtrap. It's what I use, it's free, and it's easy to use. Once you're done recording, mash all your clips together in the intended chronological order, slap that VHS filter off of YouTube that I was talking about on your video, and before you export your video, render it and give it a quick watch in case any sound or video is missing, or if something didn't come out right. Once you've confirmed that, yep, that is what the world shall see, export it as an MP4 file at whatever resolution, aspect ratio, and frame rate you want. Although on my later tapes, I would typically export the video in a 4x3 aspect ratio at either 640x480 or 720x480 at 25 frames per second to enhance the fact of how real this is. Or at least how much I'm trying. So you've exported and you're ready to post. Yay! Now head over to either the desktop YouTube studio or head to the YouTube Studio app on either iOS or the Google Play Store. Click the arrow that will lead you to select a video to upload to YouTube. Click on your video. Name your video whatever you intend, as long as the title doesn't have cuss words because Susan Wiliki Chinky Bop will get pissed off. Your description, write in whatever you wish as long as you, again, don't write anything inappropriate. Also, make sure to credit any videos, music, or footage that you used. Next up, if you have a custom thumbnail you want to use, you can choose it here, or pick from three screenshots that the AI has chosen. If you plan on putting your video into a series, you have the ability in this section right here. Now we move on to tags, essentially substitute search terms. Uh, for instance, someone might not be able to search for your video if the title is complex. So instead, you can use substitutes to fill in the gap or just put your channel name in it. You have a couple of other options down here, like whether you want to let your subs know you've uploaded, what genre of content your video is, and the ability to enable or disable comments. After this comes video elements, which involves subtitles which you can add manually or via a pre-made script, and screen elements endorsing your other videos or your channel or other people's videos and channels, and cards which appear in the video which can endorse a channel, a video, or playlist of your choosing, along with later down the line, external links. Next up is checks which involves your video going through YouTube's algorithm to see if there is any copyrighted music or video. If you're smart or lucky, you'll be fine, in, at least initially. If you're just unlucky or you decided to use copyrighted music or footage, you might earn yourself a copyright claim, which does not affect your channel as opposed to a copyright strike or a community guideline strike. Have fun trying to figure out what you did wrong with those! Onto the last screen, which is visibility, which involves whether you want your video to be shown on your channel only to people who have a link to your video, or if it's privately shown. You can also select the time you want your video to go up. After this, click publish, and my friend, you've just made your first FNAF VHS tape! Congrats! Now repeat the process 12 dozen times until you have a cult following. 
I mean fan base. Well, I'd say that went quite well. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below, as I am very eager to answer people. <sighs> Sorry I held this video off for so long. And don't worry, my computer is running fine. It's, it's not at 5 frames per second, and it's not like it's about to burn. So, peace out. Like and subscribe. <coughs> let me try that again. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. And remember to ring that bell notification. Anyways, peace out.